Greetings everybody and welcome to episode 5 of the 7 Days to Die XML modding tutorial for beginners series. In the last episode we went over how to adjust vanilla recipes by altering their ingredient lists and I also showed you how to use the AND and OR syntax in XPaths so that you could combine certain commands together to save yourself some load times with modlets. In this episode, we're actually going to continue on a little bit from that because there's a few things that we haven't actually talked about yet. Namely, how can we make a recipe be craftable on a certain craft area that's already in vanilla? So for example, how to make something that's usually crafted in the backpack crafted on a workbench, or how to make something that's crafted on the chemistry station craft craftable in the backpack again. Those kind of things we haven't really talked about right now, and in this episode I want to go ahead and cover all of those things so that you guys can adjust any vanilla recipe to do anything you want to. So without any further ado, let's get started! <laughs> For our first example, I want to show you guys how we can change a vanilla recipe so that instead of being crafted in the backpack, it's going to be crafted on the workbench. Now, in the previous episode, we went over how to adjust a recipe by adding or removing ingredients. So we used append and remove xpaths to go ahead and say remove the feathers like this, or maybe to add in a new ingredient. So we could use append to go ahead and add in another ingredient below this list like here. So you can go ahead and use append and remove to alter the ingredients list in the recipes. But in order to make something craftable on a workbench, as you've seen, we need to have a craft area attribute. So what we need to do is we need to use a command that's going to add a new attribute and it's going to call it craft area equals workbench, right? So we need to go ahead and find a command that goes ahead and does this. Now there is actually a command that will do that and it's called set attribute. So let me go ahead and set this out and we're going to show you how it works. So with this X path here we're about to write is going to make iron arrows uh, craftable on the workbench. That's the first thing we're going to do. So this, first of all, let's go ahead and type in the syntax that we need. So we're going to type in set attribute like this, and then we're going to go ahead and close it just like this. So we do need to go ahead and have a closing tag like this. Now, the set attribute, unlike most of the other things we look like set and append, actually requires two things. It requires an X path which is going to lead us to the element that we want to add the attribute to. And then it's going to go ahead and require a name parameter as well so that we can tell it the name of the attribute that we want to add to the tag. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and find the X path that's going to lead us to the tag that we want to add the attribute to. In this case, it's this recipe tag. So we want to add the attribute, the craft area one right here. So we want to add the craft area equals workbench here, right? So the thing that we need to find is this tag right here, the recipe whose name equals ammo arrow iron. So let's go ahead and do that first. So as before, let's go and start. We'll start by writing the X path. So here we go. We're going to start with the recipes as we did before. So we go slash recipes like this, and then we want to go down into every recipe like this. And then we go ahead and we use these square brackets to say, OK, we want this recipe to meet a certain condition, right? So the condition that we want this to meet is that its name attribute is exactly equal to and it's going to be ammo arrow iron, right? And we're going to have to spell this exactly. So it's ammo and then a capital A for arrow and then a capital I for iron, just like this. The next thing we need to do with our set attribute is tell it the name of the attribute that we want to add or change. So set attribute as well as adding attributes can actually change the value of an existing one if it's there already. But in this case, we need to add a craft area attribute like this. So we need to just go and add one uh, like this. So you need to add a craft area equals workbench. So in this case, remember, the name of the attribute is displayed in green and the value of the attribute is displayed between the quotes. So the name of the attribute that we need to set is called craft underscore area. So in this name field, I'm going to go ahead and use craft area just like that. Now, between these two tags right here, between this closing and opening angle bracket before the tag closes is where we go ahead and put the value of the attribute that we want to set. So in this case, the name of the attribute is craft area and we want to set it to have a value of workbench, 
right? So if we go ahead and set the value of workbench, just like that, essentially what this is gonna do now is, is gonna make it look exactly like this. So it's gonna go ahead, first of all, it's gonna look through all the recipes and it's gonna go, is this recipe ammo arrow iron? No, it's not. How about this one? And it's gonna go, ah, this is the recipe tag with the name ammo arrow iron. Now we've led it to this tag right here and it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna look at any of these attributes and say, does it already have an attribute called craft area? No, it doesn't. So it's gonna go ahead and create one. So it's gonna go ahead and just create a craft area attribute just like that. And then it's going to go ahead and say, OK, well, what's the value that we want to assign to that craft area attribute? It's going to be this guy right here. So then it's going to go ahead and add equals and then add workbench just like that. And that's what set attribute can do in order to allow you to essentially make a backpack recipe craftable on a workbench. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've undone all the changes in the recipe file because we don't want anything going wrong here. We're going to save our work right here over this one. And now we're going to go ahead and launch into seven days. I'm going to check that everything works. So of course, when launching into seven days for the first time, we want to make sure that all of our mods load correctly. So we're going to go ahead and skip past the intro scene. We're going to do the F1 test, as you can see. Looks like everything so far is running fine. Don't see any yellow text. As you can see, both the mods have loaded correctly. Then we'll go ahead and continue into our test world. And we're going to go ahead and check that we didn't get any errors with this X path. So again, as before, we're looking for yellow or red text to indicate that something has gone wrong. So we're going to let it load up the world here. Keep an eye on the console because, you know, the F1 test will uh, will definitely save your modding experience a little bit. And we're probably going to have to scroll down to make sure everything loaded. There we go. So it's now scrolling through. It's now loading all of the XMLs in. And as you can see, no yellow text apart from what's going to come up on the animator past all of this stuff. And again, that one we don't in particular need to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and initialize the world and then when we come in, we can go ahead and check our recipe. So let's go ahead and close down our console with F1 again. And here we go, just about to launch right about now. There you go. And as you can see, the thing came in just in time because it's the first time I loaded the game. It takes a bit of time, but then we close it down. And now let's look for the iron arrow recipe. And if we look here, as you can see now, the iron arrows now need to be crafted on the workbench, whereas they didn't need to be crafted on the workbench before. So that's the power offset attribute. Let's go ahead and do it for another one. So before we do that though, let's go into this recipes thing and let's see what the set attribute actually did. So now if we look at, uh, it was called ammo arrow iron, right? If we go and look at that, you can see now that if we look at our ammo arrow iron right here, you can see now that this craft area equals workbench has been added. And you can see it says attribute craft area added slash overwritten by my first modlet. Now this one doesn't show you the X file that does it unfortunately, it would be nice if it did but it doesn't. But as you can see that's what set attribute does and you notice it says added slash overwritten. So for example if we already had something that had a craft area of something else we could actually overwrite that as well. So let's go ahead and do another one and I'll show you how this works. So let's go into our recipes uh, our vanilla one and let's look for another recipe that already has a craft area and we're going to change it to something else. So, as you can see, we've got the ammo crossbow bolt flaming. As you can see, this one has a craft area already of workbench, right? So what we're going to do this time, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this craft area to the chemistry station. And you'll see that set attribute works just the same. So let's go ahead and start our tags here. So this is going to uh, change um, flaming crossbow bolts, uh, not crucebow. Uh, to be crafted on the chemistry station. Not that it makes too much sense, but you know, it's, it's okay. So let's go ahead and first of all, we're going to type set attribute inside these angle brackets here, and we're going to close it so it does this auto closing. Now remember, this requires both an X path and it requires a name. So we're going to go and set those two things up and then let's go ahead and get what we need. So the first thing is we need an X path to take us to the element that we want to add the attribute to, right? So the element right here is this recipe name. So this recipe name equals ammo crossbow bolt flaming. So to get that, we need to do that with our X path, right? So to get to that element, we go ahead and start from the root and go into recipes. That is our root node. Then we go a level down and then we go into the recipe tag. So any recipe tag so far. And then we want to find any recipe tag whose name attribute has a value 
of ammo crossbow bolt flaming just like that and that is going to go ahead and bring the pointer right into this recipe right here now all we need to do is we need to decide what attribute we want to add or override in this case we want to change the craft area from workbench to chemistry station so the attribute that we need to add or override again is the craft area attribute there we go now what we can do is we can go ahead and say well what is the chemistry station uh it is just like this so between these we need to go ahead and just say chemistry station just like that and now if we go ahead and load the game one more time so let's come out of here and we're going to go ahead and reload this thing up one more time so we will continue and we'll let this load up again we're going to do the f1 test to make sure that this ran properly and i think it will do and there we go, it'll load up a lot quicker on the second subsequent run, it usually does. And then, once we go ahead and get ourselves back into the well, we should see, after all is said and done, that now those flaming crossbow bolts have been moved. So here we go, we're now back in the world, excellent. And let's go ahead and check that recipe. So now let's just type in uh, flaming. There we go. And you can see currently it doesn't say it doesn't say where it's crafted because this thing is currently locked, right? This is locked behind something right now. So it won't show you where it's craftable. However, what we should find is if we go ahead and unlock it, what do we actually need to unlock that? We need on this one, the Ranger's Guide to Archery Volume 5. So to get to creative mode to find it, let's just type in, we go into F1 and type in CM and then we come out of the console and press U and now we're going to go look for a ranger's guide to archery and uh, we want volume 5 so all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab this and we're going to go ahead and use that one and now we should find that as you can see the flaming crossbow bolts are now required on the chemistry station so if we go ahead and look in our XML file that's been overwritten in the config dump one, so if we go back to this one, you'll see now that if we go down to the flaming crossbow bolt, you can see that the craft area one used to be workbench, but now it's been overwritten. So set attribute can be used to both add or overwrite things. Now you don't need to go ahead and just use that to add and overwrite things for the craft areas. You can use this to add or overwrite any attribute for example, if we had a look at another recipe, let's go ahead and have a look and see if there's any that we would like to go ahead and look. Now, how about one of these? Uh, how about these ammo bundles? What we could do is we can make it so that with these with these ammo bundles, we can make it so that the craft time is less, right? So we can make it so that we could craft these a little bit quicker. So currently it takes 240 seconds, which is like four minutes, right? So that's very, very long. So how are we going to go ahead and change the craft time for all of these things? Well, let's go ahead and have a look. First thing we're gonna do is we need to go ahead and set up our set attribute. So let's go ahead and we're gonna say, we're going to do this one and we're gonna say shorten craft time of stone arrow bundles. There we go. We're gonna do that and let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, we're gonna start our set attribute right here. So we're going to type set attribute between these angle brackets and then it's going to go ahead and do this and remember set attribute requires both an x path and it requires a name here we go so this time we need to get the x path that's going to lead us to the element that we want to set the attribute on and the element is this recipe tag right here with this name of ammo bundle arrow stone so let's copy that recipe name and we'll go ahead and write our x path so remember we start at the top level at recipes it's our route then we go one level down into every recipe tag and then we go with the condition that we want to find one whose name whose at whose name attribute has a value of ammo bundle arrow stone just like that and then remember to close our brackets okay so what is the name of the attribute now that we need to set well if we go back and have a look at this one we want to reduce the craft time right as you can see craft time is right here so the name of the attribute this time is going to be called craft underscore time. And then between these two angled brackets here, all we need to do is set a different value for the craft time. So let's say we can make a bundle of these things in 30 seconds instead of 240. So what this is gonna do now is it's gonna find this. It's gonna say, does the craft time attribute exist already? Yes, it does. So all it's gonna do is it's gonna say, well, that's what the value is, overwrite it with that. And that's what we should find when we load up the world the next time. So one more time, as you guys know, we're gonna go ahead and save it. And let's go ahead and reload this one more time. Um, so we'll come out of here, we'll go ahead and reload again. And you should see now that once we've got 
gone ahead and reloaded into the world, again with the F1 test, we can go ahead and verify that this is all good. So again, load in the world, make sure all of our X paths are done correctly. But you can see I'm loading into the world after every little change I make, because by doing this, I'm trying to get you to do this to get into good habits when you're modding. Make small changes like this, because then you'll know that if something goes wrong, you'll know precisely where to look rather than, ah, I've done like three hours of modding, but I don't know where to diagnose my errors, right? So that's another very good, useful thing to bear in mind. So let's go and look at Stone Arrow. And you can see this one is now a bundle of Stone Arrows. And there you go. The craft time right here is 30 second. And you get that on doing the completion to the Ranger's Guide to Archery. All right. Well, what else can we do? Let's have a look at some other things. How will we make it that when we made, say, a bundle of Stone Arrows, how can we make it cost less rocks and less wood, but more feathers? Let's say that we wanted to change the counts of these things in our ingredients list. Now, what you could do is you could just go ahead and overwrite the ingredients list and be done with it. However, if you want to change specific things, I recommend doing more surgical changes with set attribute because that will make things more compatible with other modlets. For example, there might be another modlet that is trying to be compatible with yours that looks for that looks for something that requires like rock small and wood and feathers at certain values. So if you go ahead and overwrite them, it's going to go ahead and give errors in the other modlet that's trying to be compatible with yours. So in, in some cases, yes, it may be a little bit slower, but doing more surgical changes like this will also make your mod more compatible with other ones that currently exist. So what we want to do is I want to change the values of resource rock small to 50. I want to change resource wood to 50, but then I, st I want to put feathers back up to 100 because that kind of makes sense. You still need 100 feathers and stuff. But if you were to do like a batch of arrows all at once, you would probably need less stones and wood because there'll be less waste, right? So that, that kind of makes sense. But you still need the same amount of feathers. So let's go ahead and make that recipe make a bit more sense. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change the stone arrow bundle to use less uh, wood uh, or to use say 50 stone and wood but 100 feathers to craft it okay so here we go let's see how we're going to do this so first of all well this time we're going to have to do set attributes on each of these ingredients so this time we're actually going to need three set attributes to use so let's go ahead and do that so set, we're going to start off with this and we're going to go set attribute again and first of all we need an x path and we need a name right so here we go so we're gonna go x path i'm gonna go name and then we're gonna go and close this now because we need three of them we're gonna go ahead and copy these so let's go and copy it once and copy it twice now we have three so let's go ahead and come up with an x path that's going to lead us to this first ingredient right here well first of all we can get to the recipe using what we had before so if we go ahead and copy this first x path from up here this will at least get me to the recipe part right so that'll get me to this thing here but we need to go one level deeper and look at each of the ingredients right so to get the ingredient whose name is this we need to go at the end of this x path we go one level deeper again with the forward slash and now we're going to look for the ingredient and then we need to look for the name of that ingredient is going to be equal to resource rock small just like that and now what we need to do is we need to say okay now that we're in this ingredient so this it's now pointing to this node right here what is the name of the attribute that we want to add or overwrite well in this case the name of the attribute is actually the count attribute right so in our name field right now as you can see the quotes have actually come down here we're going to type in count just like that and then between these two angled brackets is what value we want to go ahead and assign to that count attribute so if we go ahead and look at the count here well we wanted this to be 50 right so all we need to do is go ahead and put a value of 50 right there now similarly we want to go ahead and do and actually if you look at this the uh, the x paths for these other two are essentially going to be exactly the same but we're using different ingredients so for the second one we can copy this x path here and we're going to go ahead and paste this right here but this time the ingredient name instead of being um instead of the name being resource rock small is just resource wood right so we just want to type resource wood just here and again the name of the attribute that we want to add or overwrite again is the count attribute and again we want to set that to 50 just like that finally we've gone ahead and done the second one let's do the third one so for the third one here 
let's go ahead and overwrite the resource feather ingredient. So we're going to go ahead and change the name to resource feather, just like that. And the name, of course, is once again, the count attribute, just like that. And this time we want to set it to use 100. So now, as you can see, it's going to use 50 of these, 50 of these, and 100 of these. Now, before we go ahead and test, is there any way we can actually make this a little bit more efficient? And if you have a look at this first one here and the second one, you can see that the, that the value we want to set in these two is both 50. So instead of doing two separate X paths, we can go ahead and do one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, I'm going to go ahead and copy everything that is similar about these X paths. So it's going to be all up to here and up to this bit. So these, everything up to here is the same in this X path here and this one here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go ahead and put it just here. Then what we need to do is we're going to type in after ingredient, we're going to go ahead and type these brackets, put a space and then type or, and then put a space. Then all we need to do is copy the bit from this bracket here for the first one. So we're going to copy this first one right here. And then we're going to go ahead and copy the second one right here like that. So there we go. So I can go copy that one and then we can go ahead and copy this one right here. There we go. And this X path will actually now point to both of the ingredients. It'll point to the rock small and the wood ingredient together. So then all we need to do is essentially replace these two with a single set attribute, right? So what we can do is let's remove one of them just like that. And then we can replace the X path in that one that we have left with this one. So we're going to cut it from here and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right into here. So we're going to go ahead and take that X path there. And remember, make sure you've got a set of two single quotes like that and then paste it in just like that. Now you can see that we've, uh, although we have three attributes we want to set, we can actually combine two of those together because we're actually overwriting the same value into both of these ingredients. So here we go. Let's go ahead and save our work again. Then as before, we're going to go ahead and come out of here, exit the world. And once again, let's go ahead and check that that's worked. So we go continue, we go log in again. And of course, this time we want to do the F1 test to make sure everything is running. There I go. And my PC is stuttering again because it likes to do that on the, on seven days. Loads. I think I'm uh, I think I'm overtaxing it slightly, but there we go. So here we go. We're going to go over to here. And then let's go ahead and get all the way to the end. And now what we should find is if we go ahead and look at that stone arrow bundle again. Um, so let's go stone arrow. There we go. And a bundle of stone arrows. There we go. And as you can see now, if we look at the recipe, you can see now that there we go. It requires 50 stones and 50 wood, both of these being set with that single X path. And as you can see, it requires 100 feathers just like that, which is absolutely awesome. The next thing I want to do is summarize everything we've learned in these last two episodes up to this point and make some changes to this recipe right here, the Iron Door Double Block Variant Helper. What I want to do in this case is make it so that this is required to be crafted on a workbench, first of all. Then I also want to add some new tags to this thing that is going to be the workbench crafting tag and the perk advanced engineering tag. Then I want to add a new ingredient to this thing that's going to be mechanical parts because, you know, it would kind of make sense that mechanical parts are used indoors. And then I want to make a passive effect that means that as you level up your advanced engineering perk, it's going to go ahead and reduce the costs of some of these things. Now, we have covered most of this in previous episodes, so this should be a nice little summary to see how we can go ahead and combine everything we've learned into one. So let's go into our recipes file and let's tackle this bit by bit. So first of all, let's go ahead and say uh, making changes to the uh, double, uh, yeah, double iron doors. There you go. So we're going to make some changes to that. So the first thing we want to do is I want to go ahead and make this thing craftable on the workbench. So in order to make it craftable on the workbench, we need to add the craft area equals workbench attribute into this. So to do that, as we do, we need to go ahead and use set attribute. So let's go ahead and start with that first. So we go set attribute and then that requires both an X path and the name of the attribute that we want to add. And then the value of the attribute then goes between these angle brackets. So first of all, let's go ahead and get the X path that's going to lead us to the element that we want to set the attribute on. So the element is this recipe whose name is Iron Door Double Block Variant Helper. I'm just going to copy this. And here we go. So here we go with our X path. So first of all, we start with the recipes. 
So we're going to go into here first. That's the root node. And then we go forward slash to go a level down. And we're going to type recipe. Now this is going to pull out all recipes. So we need to find the specific one. So let's look for the recipe whose name attribute has a value of iron door double block variant helper. OK, so what is the name of the attribute now that we want to add or overwrite on this tag? Well, the name of the attribute is, of course, craft area, right? So let's go ahead and type in craft underscore area as the name. And now the value of that attribute goes between here. So how do we make it craftable on the workbench? Well, we need the craft area attribute to have a value of just workbench, right? So we'll go ahead and type that in here. And there we go. So now, as you can see, we've now made this thing craftable on the workbench. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is make it so that this thing has two tags. Now, remember that the tags are also another attribute of this thing, right? So the uh, the tags on this thing essentially is perk advanced engineering and workbench crafting. So we can go ahead and find um, we can go ahead and find one of those maybe. But you can see that the tags are also just another attribute. So as we did before, we can go ahead and use a set attribute on this to add a tags attribute with the values that we like. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go into set attribute again. Now, in this case, the X path is going to be exactly the same, right? Because this X path is going to add the recipe node that we want to adjust. So we can just go ahead and copy this X path and do that. And then the name this time of the attribute that we want to add or overwrite in this area is just tags, right? And then once we close out our set attribute tag here between these two, we just want to type in the exact name of the tags we want. So the first one is just workbench crafting with a capital C like that. And then we have a comma and then we have perk and then capital A for advanced and then a capital E for engineering. So now what we should find is this is going to add the tag for both of these things. So remember, workbench crafting means that it will craft faster on the workbench. And then perk advanced engineering means that if we assign a passive effect for the crafting costs, that perk will actually reduce the crafting costs for us, which is really nice. OK, next, we want to go ahead and add a new ingredient to this recipe. We want to go ahead and add an ingredient that is going to be used for mechanical parts. And we want to add two of these. How do we go ahead and do that? Well, remember, adding and removing ingredients to a recipe is really easy. This one is just append, right? So we're going to go and append. Uh, if I can spell append right, there you go. So we're going to append. That just requires an X path as an input. And the X path, once again, is just this, right? So again, it's the same X path that we need from before. So let's go ahead and copy this one because we're appending ingredients to this recipe. So this is going to lead us to the recipe. And then this is where we add our ingredients like this. So. We're going to go and do ingredient name, and that's going to be resource mechanical parts. And then it also needs a count. So ingredients need, need name and account. Let's just say it requires two. It's a double door, so therefore two mechanical parts would work. And that's going to go ahead and add the new ingredient. Very nice. Now, finally, we want to go ahead and add a passive effect that's going to work with the crafting costs. Now, remember, when we do that, um, it's linked into this one here. So you can see the crafting ingredient count. And this time we want it to go ahead and be affected by the advanced engineering perk. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy this effect group right here. And we can go ahead and move this just down. We can actually I think there was a better one we could do. Let's type in perk advanced engineering. Um, like this, and then we can go ahead and find the one that we want. So here we go. Here's the values we need. So what we need essentially is to add this passive effect after the ingredients, right? So let's go and copy this. And then we're going to go back into our recipes here. And we're going to just I'm just going to paste it right here just for a minute. There we go. So we're going to paste that effect group here and we're just going to leave it there. This is the thing we want to add. So again, to add something to the end of all those ingredients, again, we're just going to use an append, right? So we're going to use an append X path equals and then recipes. And actually, this X path is going to be exactly the same as the one above. So again, we can just go and grab this one because, again, we just want to add it to the end of the recipe after the ingredients. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. We will do append X path recipe. And then all we need to do is this effect group that we just copied here. We're going to go ahead and paste it into there. Now, are we done yet? Actually, 
No, not quite. As you can see in this passive effect here for the crafting ingredient count, you can see that it increases the forged iron, which is fine because this recipe does have forged iron in it, right? So if we look at this recipe, um, and let's go and actually find it again. So let's go ahead and grab this iron door double block variant helper. We'll go ahead and go into here. So you can see that it already has forged iron right here, which is fine, right? However, We've also added the mechanical parts to this, but the tags in this effect group, as you can see, are actually resource electric parts, which obviously is not going to affect the mechanical parts. So we actually need to go ahead and change this to resource uh, mechanical parts. So let's go ahead and change that over. And there we go. Now we're done. And as you can see, this will go ahead and change that recipe. Now, before we go ahead and test this, let's have a look and see. Is there any way we can make less calls to different commands? Can we go ahead and reduce the number of command calls? Currently, we have four. We have two set attributes and we have two appends. Can we reduce this in any way? Well, let's have a look. Well, as you can see, the append one, we actually can. Because if you can see, we're appending to exactly the same place. So essentially, we're writing one append command to do this and one append command to do this in exactly the same spot. So what we could do instead is just grab this effect group and put it in the same append command just here. So we can just go ahead and put that one in the same append command, and then we can go ahead and remove that one. So now we've reduced our overhead from four commands down to three, which is great. There we go, because it's going to append both the ingredient and the effect group at the same time, because they both fall inside the recipe tag, right? As new elements underneath it. How about these first two? As you can see, both of our set attributes have an equal X path. So can we combine these together? The answer is no. And the reason is because the name of the attributes that we're trying to set, as you can see, are both different and also the values that we're trying to set are both different. The only way you can combine set attributes together into a single X path example is if you have the same name and the same value for your attribute, and then you just want to add those same things to several recipes. So unfortunately, we can't go ahead and combine these. But as you can see, we managed to increase our efficiency of this thing by uh, roughly 25% by removing one of those things and combining those appends together. So let's go ahead now and let's go ahead and go into game one more time. So I'm going to go back into seven days and we're going to go ahead and exit out. And finally, we're going to go ahead and see if this all works. So let's go ahead and come back in here. We're going to go into here and again, we're going to do the F1 test and let's see how this works. So we're going to go into the F1 test. We're going to let this load up. We're going to let my PC stutter. My PC's like, did I stutter? And then we're going to go ahead and check how this all worked. So we can now have a look at the iron doors and see what happened. What we should find now is that the recipe has been adjusted and then advanced engineering is actually going to affect it. So now if we look at, um, uh, so it's going to be iron, I think it's iron double door. Um, iron double door, here we go. And that's what it is there. As you can see, there we go. It's craftable on the workbench. You can see that it now does require mechanical parts and the craft time is currently one minute. Now, this is, of course, because my advanced engineering perk is maxed out. But let's go ahead and give myself a forget an elixir. Uh, we're going to go CM and then we're going to press U to go ahead and get that. Um, and then we'll get, enough, uh, we'll get ourselves a forget an elixir. Oh, I actually have one right there, so never mind. Let's go ahead and use that. Reset our perk points. There we go. And now if we go ahead and look at it, you'll see now that the iron door now requires roughly 50% more material when we haven't upgraded advanced engineering. And as you can also see, it takes 1 minute 40 in order to go ahead and craft. So as you can see now, the perks are actually affecting it as it would do now that we've added those things. So if we go ahead and look at the XML now, and let's go ahead and find that recipe in our config dump, you'll be able to actually see all the changes that we've made. So if we go ahead and find it, you can see now that I can. it's saying, okay, the attribute tags is added and overwritten by my first modeler. And we've also attribute craft area, we've overwritten both of these things, right? There we go. And then you can also see that we've added the new ingredient right here, and the element is appended by that. And you can also see that we've also added this effect group as well with the passive effect. So you can see that it's also gone ahead and appended both of these effect groups and passive effects as well. And you can see that um, although it's saying both of these things were appended by my first modlet, you can see that it's actually all done in one uh, single command just up here. So we've only used one single operation for this, which is really, really good. And that pretty much summarizes everything we've done up to this point in order to go ahead and pretty much overhaul a recipe.
as well as adding attributes into your XML, sometimes you might want to actually go ahead and remove attributes completely. So currently we've looked at how to add and overwrite them, but there is a way to also remove them. And I've got an example for you right here. Let's just assume that for whatever reason, we didn't want the first aid bandage to have to be unlocked with a perk. Now we spoke briefly about this tags equals learnable. Now this tags equals learnable essentially controls as long as anything has a learnable tag, it will be set to locked by default. And then you have to unlock it with a perk or a skill or some other means of unlocking that recipe. However, if you remove this tags equals learnable, it will mean that the first aid bandage is essentially enabled by default and you'll be able to craft one straight away. So how do we go ahead and remove an attribute from an XML element? Well, the answer to that is very simple. Just like we have one for set attribute, we literally have a command called remove attribute. So let's go ahead and look at this. So this is going to remove the learnable tags attribute from the first aid bandage. Uh, so it unlocks by default on a new game. Okay, so this one is literally just called remove attribute. So we're just going to type in remove attribute just like this. And then this is actually the only thing we actually need in this case is an X path because we can actually point to the attribute directly with an X path, unlike set attribute where the attribute may not exist already. And even better yet, this is also a self closing tag, just like this. Now what we need to do is write an X path to point to the attribute that we want to remove. So in this case, if we have a look, the attribute that we want to remove falls under this recipe tag, right? So all we need to do is write an X path that navigates to our recipe tag and then go one level deeper to get to our attribute. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and do this from the top. So we start with the recipes and then we go one level down into the recipe tags. And then we want to find any recipe tag whose name equals medical first aid bandage, right? So we're going to look for any recipe whose name equals medical first aid bandage. Now, as I mentioned very briefly in a previous episode, just like going one level down can get you to the elements, one level down can also get you to the attributes underneath the tag as well. So in order to get to any of these attributes here, all we have to do is we have to go at the end of this, we have to go one level down by typing a forward slash and then in order to select an attribute, instead of just typing the name of the attribute tags like this, this will look for a tags element. But if we want to look for a tags attribute, we just go ahead and type in an at sign in front of it like this. So now what it's going to do is it's going to find this recipe right here, and then it's going to say, now you've typed an at sign. So it's going to then look at these three attribute names here, and it's going to go, is this attribute name tags? No, the attribute name is just called name. A little bit confusing, but there we go. Is this attribute name called tags? No, this one is called count. There we go. How about this one? Is this attribute name called tags? Yes, it is. And this is going to essentially point to the attribute. And then what's going to happen is the remove attribute command is just going to go and it's going to go ahead and completely remove that one from the recipe. So let's go ahead and have a look at some more examples. So let's go ahead and look at um, Maybe the flannel shirt. Um, let's have a look at that one because that one has um, the tags equals learnable and so does the sweatshirt. So let's go ahead and have a look and see how we're going to do that. So we want to go ahead and make it so that we can craft flannel shirts and sweatshirts by default without needing to learn it first. In order to do that, we need to remove these tags equals learnable, right? How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need an X path that's going to get us to that tag. So here we go. Um, this one is going to remove. So this one will remove the learnable tag from some clothing items. There you go. So how do we do this? So first of all, we type in remove attribute like that. And all we need for this is an X bar. Then we're going to go ahead and make that self closing tag. So how do we find this attribute? Well, we start with the recipes as we did before, because that's the root element. Go one level down into the recipe tags. And then we want to find that specific one that has a name of apparel flannel shirt, right? And then we just want to go ahead and within that recipe tag there is look at the attributes and look at one that is called tags, just like that. And that will go ahead and remove that one. How will we do it for the next one, the sweatshirt? Well, 
as before, we'll just copy this and we'll go and do our X path again. So this time we need to go ahead and do a remove attribute like this. And then the X path is going to be uh, recipes again. So we start from the recipes, go down into recipe. And then we want to look for the specific ones that have a name of apparel sweatshirt. There you go. And then within those recipe tags, we want to go one level in and look at the attributes of that recipe tag. And we just want to go ahead and look at the tags attribute one more time. And there we go. And that will go ahead and remove both the learnable tags from these. Now, as before, can we actually condense all three of these X paths into one? In fact, yes, we can. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give myself a bit of space and we're going to copy the X path up to the part where it starts to differ. So you can see that it's similar up to this part here. So we're going to copy that and just paste it here. Now you can see that inside these square brackets, each thing is different. So name equals name equals name equals is all different each time. So I'm just going to type these square brackets as empty. But then you can see that after that, this slash tags is again all the same. So we're gonna go ahead and put the slash tags like that. Now all we need to do is this time, instead of two ors, there's actually three, isn't there? There's, there's three things we wanna put in. So I'm gonna type in space, or space, then I put another space and put or just like this. And now all we need to do is we need to put the, for our recipe one, we need to go ahead and take the first one here I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy and we're going to put it right into there. There we go. So there's the first one. Then between those two ors, after the first one, but before the second one, we're going to go ahead and put this one here. So over the second one, it will actually copy the entire thing. I only want to copy what's between these brackets that were different. So we're going to go ahead and do that one. There we go. And finally, at the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. So you can see that I can use several or statements in sequence to give me more than two things, which is really good. But now, since these are all similar, I can essentially just go ahead and uh, I'm actually going to go and rewrite this comment here. So we're just going to say, uh, remove the learnable, uh, remove the learnable tags from the, from, I just put from several items in one X path. There we go. Then I'm just going to go ahead and delete these other two, just like this. And then we can just go ahead and replace this X path with the one that we just wrote, right? So we're just going to go ahead and remove that X path here. And then if we put this X path in, it will go ahead and remove the attributes from all three of these recipes. So any recipe that has a name of medical first aid bandage or apparel flannel shirt or apparel sweatshirt, these learnable tags will be removed which is really good. So now, once again, if we go ahead and make our way into game, I suddenly went into OBS there, we don't want to go there. If I go make my way into game, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're seeing my recording software in the background. Let's go ahead and make our way in here. We'll go ahead and do the F1 test and let's see how this works. So here we go. So we'll do the F1 test. We'll go ahead and let this load up again. We'll let my PC stutter because it likes to do that too. And let's go and find out what happened now. So now we're going to go and look at the first aid bandage as an example, and you'll see that everything is working fine. So here we go. So coming to here, we now go into our crafting menu, and then let's go ahead and look at the first aid bandage first. So as you can see, the first aid bandage is now craftable from the very start of the game. We no longer need to unlock it. Okay, how about the sweatshirt? Uh, let's have a look. Um, not sweatshirt. There it is. The sweatshirt is no longer locked. And the flannel shirt, again, is no longer locked. So as you can see, everything is working fine. And I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off this forge. And I'm going to type in kill all to go ahead and kill all these zombies that are around me. Because they've now started to spawn in and they want to eat my brains. Next up, I want to talk about another type of command that we can go ahead and use. And it's very, very useful for comma separated values as these tags, as you can see in this motion sensor recipe. What is going to happen if I want to go ahead and remove the learnable attribute from this tags without affecting the perk advanced engineering? How can I go ahead and do that to make them unlock, but still work with the advanced engineering perk for our motion sensor? The first thing we could do, and using everything we have done and learned, and learned up to now, is actually possible to do it. However, there will be a better way, and I'll show you. So let's go ahead and first of all, we're going to go ahead and say, remove the learnable tag from the motion sensor. And I'm going to put this as quote unquote, uh, bad way. 
okay so that's going to be this going to be the, the bad way to do it but you because you'll see there's actually a much better way to do this in a little bit so first of all let's go ahead and we need to go ahead and first of all well we need to go ahead and we could go ahead and use remove attribute just to remove this tag thing and then we can set it again so what we could do first of all is we could go remove attribute like this x path and then the x path for this is just recipe uh, we want the recipes i want to find the recipe whose name equals motion sensor and that's all in lowercase for some reason and then we need to go one level down and just remove the tags attribute like this right so that will go ahead and remove this tags attribute completely from this recipe so now this this will go ahead and be gone um oh i'm in the wrong one this will now go ahead and be gone so now this this whole tags thing is just going to get completely taken out then what we can go ahead and do is we can then go ahead and use set attribute to just go ahead and add the tags in without the learnable tag, right? So what we can do now is again, we can go set attribute like this, and it requires an X path equals and a name equals something. And then we close this one like this and make sure that we have a closing set attribute tag just like that. Now, this time, for our X path, we want to go ahead and find the element that we want to add the tags attribute to. And the element here is just this recipe tag with the name of this. So we just need to go ahead and copy this X path right here. And because that just gets us to that recipe part that we need, right? And then the name of the attribute that we want to add is just the tags attribute, right? And then the tag that we want to add is just perk advanced engineering. Okay. So is there a better way that we can go ahead and use this? Well, as you might recall, set attribute will just overwrite an attribute if it already exists. So in fact, there's no need to actually remove the attribute first and then re-add it back in. So technically, we could just go ahead and take this whole command out because it's not necessary, because all we're doing now is just overwriting the value of the attribute with this. So essentially what it's gonna do is now we've gone ahead and said, find this recipe, and it's going to say, OK, look for this attribute and it's going to go ahead and replace this with this. Right. And that's what it's going to do. It's just going to overwrite that and replace it with that. However, that's not the best way to do it. Now, remember how I was just talking about this being a list of comma separated values. In other words, CSV. There is actually a new type of XPath included in Alpha 21, or sorry, a new command that will go ahead and allow you to add or remove things from attributes that have either a comma set of separated list or some other character separating things. So for example, if you had like a load of things with like dashes in between them, or you had a load of uh, like, maybe like a load of numbers with like colons between them, you could go ahead and use this new command in order to add, change or overwrite things. So what we're going to do is we're going to so we're going to go ahead and do another comment here and this is new so we're going to go through several examples so you can see we're going to go ahead and this one is going to be again uh, remove the learnable tag from the motion sensor which is the good way now why is it bad and why is it good we'll talk about it after we've done this in a little bit but first of all we're just going to go ahead and say well what we need to do is we need to go ahead and type an open angle bracket and this is just going to go ahead and be called csv so like i said comma separated values csv right now this thing requires two parameters we have an x path one like this equals something and then we have an op parameter, which is short for operation. Now op can be set to add or remove. So in this case, we actually want to go ahead and remove something from these tags. We want to go ahead and remove the learnable value from this comma separated list, right? So for our op, we need to say remove like this, and then we go ahead and close it like that. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and point to the attribute where our comma separated list is. So that you can see, we essentially have this recipes and we want to look inside that tags attribute. So we've already got an X path that leads us to that recipe, just like this. So we're gonna go ahead and put the X path in right here. But then inside our motion sensor recipe, we go a level into it and then we look for the tags attribute like that. And now what we want to do is saying, look at this tag and it's gonna say, now remove something. And then between these two things, we just have to type what we want it to remove without needing to put in the commas. 
because CSV by default will look for commas as a separator. So it's gonna go into here. We're gonna go and just remove the learnable one. So we're gonna copy that. And then between these things, we're gonna go ahead and just put learnable just like that. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna go ahead then and it's gonna look into, it's gonna go here, it's gonna look at the motion sensor and it's gonna go, okay, so there's a comma separated list in tags. And it's gonna go, okay. Now because it's separated by a comma, it's gonna go ahead and say, okay, so we have two entries in this list. We have this one and we have this one. And it's told us to remove the learnable one. So it's gonna say, does this one, is this one learnable? No, it's not. Is this one learnable? Yes, it is. And it's gonna go ahead and remove it. And as a bonus, it will also clean up any trailing commas for you and it will leave you with just, with, with just that. So that should go ahead and do the same thing as this one. So if we go ahead and comment this one out, because I don't want to go ahead and uh, I don't want to go ahead and have that uh, go bad, we'll comment this guy out like this. And then let's go ahead and load the game so you can see how it worked. So if we now go, so this is going to be for the motion sensor. If we now go back into seven days, once again, we're going to go ahead and replace it and launch it again. And then we can go into this one right here. So here we go. So we go into this one. And then when we load into the world, again, we got to do the F1 test, make sure everything worked fine. And so far, it does look like everything has worked. There we go. And here we go. Nice. There we go. So now we're back in the game and let's go ahead and look at the motion sensor. So if we just type in motion sensor, as you can see now, this thing is craftable on the workbench still. But as you can see, everything has been removed for the unlocking. So as you can see, this is still affected by the advanced engineering perk. So if I was to go ahead, say, and level up my intellect and my advanced engineering again, so let's go and do that one. So let's go and level that up to 10 and let's go ahead and level that up to five. You should see now that this thing is still affected. There you go. The time has slowed down and you can see that the actual crafting costs are still cheaper. So this thing is still interacting just fine with the advanced engineering perk. First CSV example may have been a little bit difficult to get to grips with because it operates a little bit differently than all of the other operations that we've looked at so far. However, I'm going to go ahead and give you two more examples just so you can go ahead and get to grips with it. So what I want to do in this case is make it so that the Vault Hatch 01 powered is not learnable. So you need to have this unlocked by default. So all we need to do is remove this part of the tags attribute from this. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do first of all is to do that to a comma separated values of, of things. We're gonna go ahead and do this. We're gonna say remove the learnable tag from the, and that's gonna be the vault, the vault door electrical. So we'll just go ahead and copy that one. And I'm just gonna say that. Um, and this is, of course, going to be with the CSV one. So what we're going to do, this requires the CSV one, because as you can see, we've, we're essentially removing a uh, we're removing a value from inside a several list of them. Right. So we need to go ahead and use a CSV one because, you know, comma separated values. Right. So this requires two things. It requires an X path and we're going to fill in the X path in a minute and it's going to require an op. And the operation in this case, because we're removing something from here, we just need to type in remove like that. There we go. Then we go ahead and close it out like that. And then between here is what we want to remove. So first of all, let's go ahead and do the X path that's going to lead us to this tags attribute. So what we need to do is find the recipe whose name is this, and then go inside that recipe and get to the tags. So as before, we go ahead and we start with the recipes. So we go to recipes, then we go down into every recipe. Then we look for that specific one who has a name attribute of vault hatch 01 underscore powered. And then we just want to go inside the tags attribute because that's where our comma separated list can be found. There we go. Now what I want to do is go ahead and remove something. And the thing we want to remove from that is going to be learnable, right? I need to actually move my find thing here so I can get this one. So we want to remove the learnable tag from that. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste in learnable into this one. And with that, essentially, it will go ahead and it will look into this tag and go, OK, here's our comma separated list. Is this equal to learnable? No, it's not. How about this? Yes, it is. So it will go ahead and remove that individual learnable tag right there. Now, another thing I want to do as well 
is in this very same recipe, I actually want to go ahead and look at the passive effect right here. And I want to go ahead and make it so that the crafting costs only apply to electrical parts and mechanical parts. I don't want it to apply to the resource forged steel and the resource spring, right? So this time I want to essentially remove these two values from this from this tags inside our passive effect. So how are we going to go and do that? Well, of course, this is also another comma separated values example. So let's go ahead and do this. So this time we're going to uh, remove the forged metal and springs from being affected by advanced engineering. Like this, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So, again, this is a comma separated values example. So, we're going to do CSV for comma separated values, requires an X path of something. And then again, we're removing something from this list. So, the op is going to be remove, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and close this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead, first of all, we need to get to this recipe, and then we need to get to the passive effect inside that recipe. So first of all, let's get to this recipe part. And we've actually already done that from here, right? So to get to the Volt Hatch 01 powered recipe, we just take this part of the X path and we start with that. So we'll start from there because we've kind of got a starting point. Now what we need to do is we need to navigate from that recipe down to this passive effect. Now you can see that inside the recipe, there is an effect group and then a level inside that there is a passive effect right so you can see that the the recipe kind of encompasses this whole effect group and this effect group encompasses this whole passive effect so essentially this is one level down and then this is another level down inside it so what we need to do is from our recipe we need to go down a level and instead of looking at ingredients this time we look at the effect group right and then inside that, we go ahead and look at the passive effect just in here. Now, there's only one passive effect, so we can just go ahead and use the tag. We don't need to go ahead and look at the attribute on it. So we need to go into the passive effect. And now what we want to do is inside this passive effect, we want to go ahead and find the tags attribute because that's where our comma separated list can be found, right? So what we need to do is we want to go ahead and inside our passive effect, we go one level down and we look at the attribute that is called tags. So we type in at and then tags. And that will get us to the list that we want to modify. Now we're removing something from this list. What are we removing? Well, we want to go ahead and remove the resource forged steel and we want to go ahead and remove the resource spring. So we're actually just going to copy these two values and we're going to leave the comma in between these as well, because the comma will go ahead and tell this operation that there are actually two things to remove. Now, because the delimiter of this list is a comma, um, essentially because these things are all separated by a comma, if we go ahead and use a comma in the stuff that we want to remove, it will actually automatically determine that, hey, there's actually two things we want to remove from this list, and it will go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and between these two things, we're just going to go ahead and paste this like this. We're going to paste the resource forge steel like that and the resource spring just like that. And as you can see now, what it's going to do is it's going to go, OK, so we've got two things to remove. So it's going to go into this list and it's going to go, OK, so is this, it's, it's gonna go, is this resource steel? No, is this one resource steel? No, how about this one? No, how about this one? It's gonna go, yes, that's one. And it's gonna go ahead and do that. And it's gonna go ahead and remove it. Then it's gonna go, is this resource spring? Yes, it is. And it's gonna go ahead and do that. And then cleverly, it will remove all the trailing or leading commas in the list. And you'll be left with a list that looks just like that. However, I need to undo all this because you know I kind of need to make sure that I don't overwrite my vanilla file. So now this vault hash door essentially will not be unlocked via a perk. You'll have it from the beginning. And the advanced engineering now will only affect the mechanical parts and the electrical parts, just like that. Now, I do want to go ahead and have a look at another example, but this time I actually want to go ahead and add a tag to something instead. So as you can see, we have a few that we need, that we could potentially add some tags to. So let's go ahead and look at resource glue. That sounds like a good one. Um, so we're going to have a look at resource glue right here. And I want to go ahead and find a recipe that we can go ahead and do that as well. So as you can see, we've got some uh, some guns here. But let's see if we can find the glue recipe, because I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Unfortunately, there's a lot of recipes that do require it, though. So why don't we just type in recipe name equals resource glue. There you go. So as you can see, this one does have 
the tags of perk advanced engineering right some also have chem station crafting as well but as you can see i want to go ahead and make it so that glue has to be unlocked by something now in this and in, in this episode we're not going to look at how we can actually make that happen the unlocking part i just want to make it so that glue needs to be learned i remember to in order to have something unlock we need to add a tag of learnable so this time we're actually going to be using the add operation of the csv so essentially we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this here and we're going to say um uh, from this one we're going to say make uh i should say here we go make glue need an unlock before we can craft it like that there we go so now the glue recipe there's actually several recipes but in this case we want every one of these things to be unlocked right so yeah the, all of these uh all of these glue ones as you can see they are all there there's actually if there's actually a few of these but we want them all to be affected so we don't have to do any special lookups to you know narrow it down by glue and then narrow it down by the craft area for example like we did when we removed the glue from the campfire this time i just want to go ahead and add it to all of these glue recipes so let's go ahead and do that so first of all, we need to do a CSV X path. So we're going to go comma separated values like that. And it needs an X path like this. And it also needs an operation or op for short. And this time the op is just going to be add. OK, so we're adding to our list. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and close this out. And then we need an X path that's going to take us to our comma separated list. Now, our comma separated list is this tags attribute within the resource glue recipe, right? So all we need to do is we need to go ahead and get that. So we're going to go ahead for our X path. We start with the recipes and then we go into the recipe, each individual one. And then we look for any recipe that has a name of resource glue, just like that. And now what we can go ahead and do is we go into here and then we look for the tags attribute within that. And now what we need to do is we actually want to add the learnable tag to it, just like this. So we can go ahead and do add, and then we're going to go and do learnable, just like that. And this essentially will then go ahead and it's going to go into each one of these and it's just going to do this. It's going to go into this list and it's just going to go right here. It's going to go comma and then it's going to go learnable. And that's literally all it's going to do. It's just going to add it in like that. So then you don't have to go ahead and say, you know, for this one, I have to set attribute of perk advanced engineering and learnable. In this one, I don't have to set the attribute of perk advanced engineering, chem station crafting and learnable. It essentially will go ahead and just add that to the end of each of those lists, which is much, much better. Now, why is CSV better than using set attribute in this case? Essentially, if you think about it, when several mods are working together that alter a lot of the same things, the set attribute X path is essentially like a complete overwrite. Set and set attribute are essentially seen as more overwriting X paths. They'll go ahead and delete everything that's there and just replace it with whatever you specify. However, the CSV X paths are a lot more surgical because they will only add and remove those things that you want them to. So therefore, mods that may rely on something still having a perk advanced engineering tag will still be able to go ahead and interact with those recipes Whereas if you'd gone ahead and just completely remove that with a set attribute, for example, that would have gone ahead and then made other mods kind of mess up or not work as expected. So using the CSVX path will actually help with compatibility with other modlets as well. So that's actually very, very useful. All right, guys, the last part of this episode, essentially we've come to the end of the recipe section of this modding tutorial series. If you can go ahead and follow along with this last example and understand all of it, then essentially you should be able to do anything you like with recipes from this point on. You'll be able to add them, remove them, and alter them in any way you see fit while maintaining compatibility and loading speed. So if you can go ahead and follow along this last one, then essentially this is like your graduation test. So here we go. This last example, what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and look at the iron bars recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and have a look at this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look at iron bars right here. And what I want to do is I want to change this recipe. I want to change this recipe from a forged based recipe into a workbench based recipe instead. And I also want to go ahead and make sure that the ingredients have been updated to be correct. And I also want to make sure that the passive effects have also been updated. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to do that. So this is going to be essentially using everything now that we've learned up to this point. So yeah, you can think of this as the graduation test. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the iron bars recipe. 
so that it crafts on the workbench using forged iron and mechanical parts. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. So the first thing we want to do, so we're going to tackle this in stages because it's easier to, so this might seem like a very big problem because you can see there's a lot of things we've got to do. We've got to change the tags. We've got to, you know, append and set, set recipe ingredients. We've got to go ahead and look at these. We've got to change the tags in here. So you might be a little bit overwhelmed, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to break something down like this into simple chunks. So let's go ahead first of all, and let's tackle how to turn this from a forge recipe into a workbench recipe. There are two things we need to do. First of all, we have to change the craft area from forge to workbench. And then we have to remove the material based equals true and the is trackable equals false. Now, I'm not actually sure what this is trackable thing does. This seems like it is a new thing with the Alpha 21 version of Seven Days. I'm assuming it has something to do with quests is what I'm uh, what I'm anticipating it is to do with. But I'll have to go ahead and look and see if I can point that out for you guys at a later point in time. I might leave a comment if I figure out what it is. But essentially, the Ford, Ford recipes do have these two things, but we've got to go ahead and remove them. So let's go ahead and get that started first. So first of all, let's go ahead and change this craft area attribute to workbench. Now for this, we need to go ahead and use a set attribute, right? So let's go ahead and copy the sign bars right here. Okay, so for the set attribute, we need to go ahead and type this out first. So we're going to do set attribute xpath, and it requires an xpath, and it also requires a name, right? There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do our closing tag. Now, the xpath needs to lead you to the element that then we want to go ahead and set the attribute on. So the element in this case that we want to go ahead and add or overwrite the attribute is this recipe one. So all we need to do is type in an xpath that's going to lead us to this iron bars recipe. So as before, we go ahead and start at the top level, work into recipes, that's our root element, then go down a level and work into recipe. Then we want to look for any recipe that has a name attribute of iron bars. There we go. And that's going to lead us directly to this thing right here. Now, what we need to do is we want to go ahead and remove this craft area attribute and replace it with craft area equals workbench, right? So the so essentially that's just like an overwrite. So the name of the attribute that we want to overwrite or add if it doesn't exist is craft area. And finally, we just go ahead and set this to workbench. Now that's the first part, and essentially that will do the first thing that we need. Now, the next thing we need to do on these elements and attributes was to go ahead and make sure that this material based equals true and the is trackable equals false attributes have both been removed. So how are we gonna go ahead and do that? Well, all we need to do in this case is just remove an attribute, right? So we're gonna do one for each. So we're gonna go remove attribute, and this just requires an X path, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and this one is a self-closing tag. Now, all we need to do is get back into this recipe element and then from inside there, go to the attribute that we want to remove, right? So we've already got an X path that gets us to that recipe element. So we may as well just copy this. So let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna go ahead and paste it in here. And then to get from that recipe element to an attribute inside it, we just go down a level and then type the at sign to get our attribute. So one of them is material underscore based. So all we're gonna do, so from within our recipe, we go down a level and then we look at the attributes in that level and then we just type in material underscore based. So at material based, and that will go ahead and remove that one right there. Then we want to go ahead and do something very similar for the other one. So we're gonna go ahead and do remove attribute X path equals and then again we've got most of this X path is actually the same right so we're going to go ahead and copy that bit that's the same and then the other attribute that we wanted to remove was the is trackable attribute which is right over here so this is the one that we want to remove as well so we're going to type in at and then is trackable just like that now that will go ahead and essentially remove those two attributes now, because we're changing this to a workbench recipe, it would also be beneficial if in these tags, we also had the workbench crafting or the workbench crafting tag added to this. Now, remember that we're essentially adding to a comma separated list or some comma separated values. So here is where we would go ahead and use the CSV XPath. 
So next we're going to go ahead and add this in. So first of all we're going to do a CSV and then XPath equals and we don't know what that is yet. We're going to work on that in a minute. And then we need to do an operation or an op and that is going to be add. Not ass, <laughs> add, there you go. <laughs> operation equals ass, well that could work too. Uh, there you go guys, a hashtag for this episode, hashtag op equals ass. There you go, that sounds, that sounds good. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the X path that we need. Well, first of all, we've got to get to this recipe and then we've got to go into the attribute that contains our comma separated list. So we can go ahead and copy this first X path here because that gets us to the actual recipe itself. So let's go and do this right there and then what we need to do is we need to just go and then say forward slash and then the comma separated list is found in the tags attribute right so there we go so now it's gone ahead and the x path pointer is now looking right here at this tags attribute and its values so now all we need to do is we need to tell it what to add right and there's only one thing we want to add and that is going to be the workbench crafting tag so we're going to do workbench and then crafting with a capital C because the capitalization is important. And now it will go ahead and add it to that tag. All right, so we've done everything that we need to on the recipe tag, that's great. But now we need to go ahead and change the ingredients because now that we're not working with a forge recipe, we do not need these units of iron or units of clay anymore. Instead, what we're gonna need now instead is maybe some forged iron and maybe some mechanical parts as well. Not sure why we need them, but let's just do it for several examples. So there are a couple of ways we can do it. We could go ahead and remove all the ingredients with the remove X path and then append the new ingredients in, or we could essentially use a set X path to do it. Now, in this case, which one is gonna be better? I can tell you in this case that removing the ingredients and then appending them is actually better than the set X path. Because if you use a set X path, you're also gonna go ahead and remove this effect group. So if we did a set on this recipe here, it will actually go ahead and remove this as well, which of course we don't want to happen. So in this case, we just want to go ahead and remove all the current, currently existing ingredients from this list. So let's go ahead and do remove X path. And then we need the X path that's going to go ahead and get us to the recipe, just like this. There you go. And then again, this is a self-closing tag, so we'll close like this. And then we just want to remove every ingredient from inside this recipe tag. So we go a level down and we select the ingredient. There we go. All right, so there we go. Now we go ahead and remove the ingredients. Now all we need to do is add our new ingredient. Now, I've told you so far that we can use append to do it but append kind of goes inside it and adds it to the end. So if we used append now, the new ingredients, well, currently we would remove them from here, right? And if we went to append, it would kind of add them down here. So it would go ingredient name equals, and it would kind of do it down here. Now, this isn't actually a problem. However, if you do want to add something to the very start of this, there is actually another way you can do that. And it's very similar. Instead of append, so adding to the end, there is also one called prepend, which will allow you to add something to the beginning, which in this case we're actually going to use. Now don't be don't be kind of put off by this. Prepend and append essentially work in exactly the same way. You're just adding to the start of the attribute or the element instead of the end of it. So essentially it just adds it in a different place, but it still adds it inside the tag you specify. So this time we're actually going to use a prepend X path like this. So this is the first time we've seen this, but just know it acts exactly like a pen does, but it adds stuff at the beginning. And the only thing we need is an X path, right? So we're gonna do prepend X path equals, and then we just need to prepend something inside our recipe and of course we've already got an x path that leads us to the recipe so we'll go ahead and do that there we go so now we're going to go ahead and close this out and then between these two prepends we want to go ahead and add our ingredients so let's go ingredient name equals and we can go resource forged iron there we go and we need to tell it how many so let's say it requires eight forged iron and then we're also going to say ingredient name equals resource mechanical parts and then the count of that is going to be let's say it just requires one mechanical part there we go. so that's going to go ahead and put our new ingredients in front of this effect effect position here so let's go and undo all these changes so we can see that it's all done there you go so essentially it's going to remove these and then prepend the ingredients in front of this now the last thing we need to do 
is make sure that the crafting ingredient count is updated so that these tags will go ahead and reflect the new ingredients. Currently the tags are set to these old ones, this unit iron and unit clay. So what we need to do now is remove the unit iron and unit clay and then add some new ones. Now because we're doing a complete overwrite, we could use set attribute to do this. However, what I want to go ahead and do is actually change this so that we use a remove CSVX path and then an add CSVX path, just so you can get used to using them a little bit more. So how are we going to go ahead and do that? Well, what we need to do first of all is target our comma separated value list. So you can see it's inside this recipe, inside this effect group, inside this passive effect. So essentially we get the X path for the recipes. So this is going to be, we're going to need two CSV X paths for this. So we're going to go CSV and then X path equals, and then we're going to go and leave that blank for now. And then the op, first of all, is going to be remove. So we're going to remove some stuff first. Um, and there we go. So we decided what we want to remove in a minute. And now to get to the X path, well, first we start with the recipe, which we've actually got right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now what we want to do is we want to go one level down into the effect group and then one level down into the passive effect. So that's how we do this next path. We go one level down with a forward slash and then we type effect underscore group. And then we go one level down again for the passive effect. There we go. And then we go one level down again inside the passive effects element to look at the tags inside it, right? So the tags is this attribute here. So we need to type in at and then tags. There we go. And that's going to go ahead and deliver us right down here. Now I'm actually going to copy this because we're going to remove from this and then we're also going to add to the same area as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this and I'm going to change this one to add. Then all we need to do is tell it what to remove and what to add. So we want it to remove both of these things from its tags. So we're going to go ahead and say remove unit clay and unit iron. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our remove one, just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and tell it what to add. And in this case, we want it to add our new ingredients, resource forged iron and resource mechanical parts. So I'm going to paste resource forged iron in here between these ones. Then I'm going to put in a comma just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and paste resource mechanical parts after our comma, just like this. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here. Then we're going to go ahead and paste that one in. Make sure that they're separated by a comma, just like that. And then to go ahead and test this, we're going to go ahead and load the game and try and see what happens. So let's go ahead and remove our way out of here. And for the last time in this episode, we're going to go ahead, continue the game and see if this works. So as you can see, there's a lot of changes here. But we should hopefully find that this has all worked all well and good. So here we go. So we're going to go into here. So far, we don't have anything yellow and everything is looking great. So no yellow text, no red text, and everything seems to have worked a OK. So there we go. There's our animation layer yellow text. So now let's go ahead and type in iron bars and see what's happened. So now if we type in iron bars, here we go. You can see, there we go. So these are the centered iron bars and the uh, the corner ones, but you can see our regular iron bars now have been moved. They now require the workbench and they also require the mechanical parts and the forged iron. Now, if I drink a forget an elixir real quick, just so we can reset our advanced engineering perk, you'll see now that the recipe is actually a bit more expensive. You can see that the mechanical parts stay the same because, you know, 50% of one is not that much, but the forged iron cost has actually gone up and it's been raised a little bit higher and the crafting time also takes a little bit longer. Okay, so how can I go ahead finally and alter this recipe so it goes ahead and affects everything else? Well, put quite simply, what we can go ahead and do is we can look for the recipes for the other iron bars. So we've got iron bar centered and we've got iron bars corner, right? So these are, there are three recipes. So essentially all we need to do is we can just say, well, it affects the iron bars, but then we can say, oh, I don't know, or it affects the iron bars centered. And, uh, or sorry, it should be, so, or name equals iron bar centered and, or, and then we can say name equals iron bars DNR, right? So that's the corner one. So we can essentially just replace that iron bars bit with, we could just add these two extra ones onto the end. And then we can go ahead and replace it with all of these, right? So we can go and do this. 
and then we can say, well, we want it to actually affect all three recipes. So now we can go ahead and do it for all three. There we go. So we can do, we can do this one. And essentially, we're going to do it with each of these just like this. And we're going to make sure that all of these have been put in. And essentially, by doing this, we can make it work with everything. So we got a little bit of uh, we got a little bit of X path to overwrite, but that's okay. We can do it for each one of these. And as you can see, it does make the X path a little bit longer. But now it will actually affect all of them, which is really cool. So there we go. We'll do it for this one, and then we'll go ahead and do it for this last one. And then we'll go ahead and do it for this last one. So you can see now that I'm affecting three recipes at once, but I'm not actually changing any of, uh, I'm not actually adding any new commands. So therefore it's actually gonna load it just as fast as if, I'd only, as if I'd have only done this for one recipe. Cause you can see all three of these things are being affected at the same time. And this is how you can go ahead and alter a Ford recipe to be put on the workbench. And as I said, this kind of uses a little bit of everything. It uses set attribute, it uses remove attribute. We got some CSV, we got a bit of remove. This time we use prepend, but just, uh, just know that you could swap that for append as well, and it would work just fine. Um, it doesn't really matter where the effect group falls. But then we also use some more CSVs to go ahead and remove some elephants, uh, elephants, some elements. So, yeah, we're, we're just removing elements, guys, uh, and removing elephants. I'm saying it right this time when I don't want to. But yeah, as you can see, I can't get this right. But yeah, we can remove elements as well and then add some new ones back in to our comma separated values of lists. So essentially, you can think of this as like the graduation test. If you can follow all this to make an adjustment to a recipe of this order of magnitude and do several recipes at once, just like this, then essentially at this point, you've pretty much learned everything that you need to to go ahead and become a recipe wizard. You can now do anything you like with vanilla recipes, and you can also go ahead and add any of your own, as well as work with some of the passive effects. So if you got to this point and you followed it on to this point, congratulations, you guys have done amazing. And with that, guys, we come to the end of another episode of the modding tutorial. Now, this is probably the last thing I'm going to be doing on recipes, at least for now, because most of the other stuff to do with recipes is to do with like how to unlock them, which is actually done in different XML files. So that's going to be a little bit more into the future. However, soon we're also going to look at how to add our own items and blocks into the game and how to do localizations and how to add custom icons for the things that you add as well. And then with this knowledge, you'll be able to add your own things in and make recipes for them so that you can add new stuff into seven days as well, which is going to be really cool. Now, in order to ensure that you've understood this, I have one final task for you guys to do. Again, it's going to involve changing a forge recipe into a workbench recipe. And I'd like you to try it for the iron arrowheads. I want you to go ahead and take the iron arrowheads that are made on the forge and change that recipe so it's now made on the workbench. Additionally, I want you to make sure that all the right tags are there, including at workbench crafting and perk advanced engineering. And if there is already a passive effect for the perk advanced engineering one, I want you to go ahead and make it so that it will interact with the new resources that you've set to craft it. I would say the iron arrowheads would probably use forged iron as a resource. And I want you to make it so they're actually crafted in batches of five instead of just one on its own. So if you guys can do that, let me know what you did in the comments. So go ahead and just paste your code in the comments so I can have a look over it because I would love to see the stuff you try out as well. Now, I know some of you have already been posting it for previous episodes and thank you guys so much for getting involved. I love looking and making sure that you guys are up to speed on everything. And it also helps me kind of gauge the, uh, it also helps me gauge the tutorials as well. So it's been very helpful having your guys input on all this. But guys, that's going to be all from me for this time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode where we look at how to add our very own items into 7 Days to Die. So guys, until next time, bye!